Uh, okay. So we just chat a little bit about Brazil, about your life. And your name is La Lais? Lais Cosermelli. Quest this is Questo Sembra Italiano. This uh, seems more a Latin name, isn't it? Yes, yes. So I have lived in Germany already. I lived in Switzerland in 2017 working as a change agent, change manager uh, in the role of cultural transformation. Yes, and currently I'm working three days a week as human resources manager and I'm also doing a master's degree in consciousness, uh, transpersonal psychology and spirituality in a university in the UK um, and with an institution called Aleph Trust. And yes, yeah, so it has been very, very busy. And now during this three months, it has been challenging to have all the different roles at home, to be a mother, a wife, and cleaning and cooking and facing all my shadows. <laughs> And homeschooling. <laughs> yes. So, for instance, this morning I was really focusing on an essay that I'm writing that I need to deliver this week. And my son was coming. So at the moment I was trying to convey an idea. Mommy, mommy, mommy. So it's very hard to keep myself balanced and present and not getting stressed. With I all can't the... believe that. Yeah. So yeah. tell me a little bit, how come that you have engaged in this, let's say, career, but it's more an interest first, no? And then led you to, to Germany and to Switzerland. That's not right. very usual, I would say. <laughs> yes, 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 you're right. Um, you are right. It, this topic on, on human development and currently the last five years I address as human and an organizational transformation since 2015, I guess. Um, it has always been a topic of interest from my personal um, aspect. I studied law, so I have a bachelor as a lawyer and I started working with Bosch 20 years ago, almost 19 years ago in the um, started with uh, improvement processes applying the concepts of lean the toyota principles i don't know if you know that applying toyota principles in the um, administrative processes in the company and then i worked with marketing and sales and in a certain moment i was invited to go to hr which i was very skeptical because i did not think it was as innovative and creative as i would like to but at that moment that was 2012 mm -hmm. And it was really a turning point in my life because I was married for 11 years. My son that you met, he was one. And at that specific moment, I got divorced with one year old kid. And I changed to uh, human resources. And I was completely knocked out. I <laughs> <For imagine. laughs> For one year, I was completely, yeah, really down. But then, I mean, I was really in love with HR from the, from the strategic perspective of how much influence we can have in terms of supporting leaders to enhance awareness in terms of the the human, not just contribution, but how much we can really expand our, our scope or our creative uh, potential when we see our relationships, not from a, 
um, not as machines or just straight to do something, but more in the creative aspect. So that was for me, I really enjoyed. So I'm, I'm really thankful until today that someone came to me and said, you go to HR and then still with my negativity, I was saying, no, no, no. But it was the best thing I did, honestly, because it has really changed uh, my, my career steps and really connected with my interests, with my genuine interests. So it was a combination of my um, personal interests with a professional uh, drive. Mm -hmm. You said before when we met the last time in a breakout room on Zoom, you said HR human, uh, what was it, resources. You, you don't like the name and actually it's not no. a nice name. It, it, it's no. like humans are machines you can exploit. They are a resource like a, a video or like a, like a gadget, a cell phone or something, you know. So I can really understand that you don't like to, to, to name people uh, things, you know. So uh, how did you then um, use this challenge or this opportunity for yourself to to change human resources into human, let's say, understanding or development and uh, yeah. or uh, human enhancement. Beings. Yes, I mean, it is really challenging because I mainly now I'm just finishing my second year in this master's. So now I am really in a deep dive with the whole expanded awareness of what it means to be human so I can feel in my body how challenging it is to bring my true self and my complete self to the setup of my work. So I can feel more and more that I, I manifest myself with freedom with my wholeness. Did you ever think that there are different levels of uh, development also in enterprises and that there are some enterprises who would be happy and who are happy to be led in this way and certain others that's just hopeless, you know, because their uh, management, it depends on the people where they are. When the people on the, in the highest etage, as we say, uh, have a let's say, a conventional mindset or a, a modern mindset where it's everything about money and, and I am the boss and you have to do what I say and so on, they won't probably be open unless they happen to be in something like a you process with Otto Sharma. So they might yeah. understand that too. But there are, as, as far as I have heard, by people who know about that, there are enterprises who are willing and happy to go a new way and to, to find coaches uh, who can accompany them. So have you yeah. thought about it and have you? Y yes, yes. And I believe now also considering what we are experiencing with this COVID-19 phenomenon, I am observing, not that I'm looking for something, but I can observe myself directing my energy towards new things. For instance, it can sound like a small step, but I could feel from my energy yesterday that it was a step further. I offered to give some workshops, online workshops, to uh, people who work in my hair salon because I was not in the hair salon for 17, seven months. So I was with the long hair and, and I was there on Saturday. Um, really, there were not many people. We were really, we couldn't be seen because it was a, a little bit behind the scenes because we cannot go. <laughs> <laughs> really funny thing 
<laughs> but I was there and they're talking to the ladies. I could feel strongly how much they wanted to get support in terms of mental health. You know, there were sentences, the majority women, and sentences like, I have never had vacation. I was the mother, the father of my children. And now that I am at home, I don't know what to do with that empty space for myself. It was, was so beautiful because, I mean, so touching, I have to say, because what I heard was, I, I'm just worth living if I'm doing something. If I'm not doing, I'm nobody. Mm. And I could hear that from the manicures, you know, those ladies and how difficult it was. And I said, hey, ladies, I can offer you some meetings that I could share some things that I know regarding this. And they were so happy. And, so, and then that was uh, Saturday. And then I talked to the owner. It's a huge saloon. It's re really big. Maybe we're talking about more than 50 people. And then I offered my, volunteered myself to help them. And yesterday I prepared a proposal. And let's see. I mean, I was really energized yesterday when I prepared these slides. And it's something completely new from my HR management role. Mm -hmm. considering processes and the hardware and so on. So. That's wonderful because so you can really support people there where the support is very much needed because I see that many people who don't have a guideline or a map or something where to go, they are just overwhelmed and then they are prone and willing to believe all sorts of strange stuff. You know, so it's better that you guide them in something which makes sense, you know, and uh, open also when you said it's about women. I think we had it for thousands and thousands of years that we have to work, that we have to do. You have to do, you have to do, be in service to other, to other yeah. beings and other interests so that we can develop our own interests is very recent, I would say. For, for many women, there were always exceptions, but <clears throat> for with a high cost. And now we can, but we don't really know how to do it. And so, because there are no role models, and when you are in the position to help other women to come out of this thousand year old conditioning of what a woman should be, should be behind her husband, should be the mother, should care for everything, but who is she? And now yeah. the corona shows, whoops, I cannot work, I cannot do, oh, yeah. who am I, you know? So that's a good occasion to, 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 to get a benefit out of what has happened. Great, great. Yeah. Let me know how it works. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm so glad. And I could perceive in my, in my body and my energy that it was a step towards a new path. You know, because it came so um, organically on Saturday, I said, I can help you. I can do something. It really came from the heart, That's you know? Mm -hmm. So I was working in one division where the CEO really opened up himself in terms of expansion of consciousness, saying, I want to do differently. It was a beautiful work. It was... He really changed himself. He doesn't have a room anymore. He sits with everybody. You know, he changed completely and the whole system changed because he opened up to a new field of who he, who he is, really. It was beautiful work. Yeah. You know, I got an idea, a, a little bit of a... <laughs> Maybe a weird idea, but maybe not. We women, we have learned over thousands of years to be seductive. So what, how could we be seductive in this sense? Not for sexuality, 
maybe you use that yeah. too, yeah. but for the opening up of, uh, of the minds of people who say at least that they want change, but they don't make it, they don't get it because they, they have too many um, blockages, you know? Yeah. So that would be a perfect task for a woman and a, a lovely looking woman like you you might have really a chance to to work with these people i mean just came crazy idea yeah. just now you know but we have some uh some tools which men don't have you know <laughs> so. true true i i i know what you mean i understand and i believe in this example that i gave successful one i think we met in this place in a way of connecting with the feminine because we were really connecting from a place where he was deeply curious about the feminine about the delicate way of bringing things to life and not the the authority and the positioning but the ability to generate collaboration and connection, these things that we as women are really strong. Mm -hmm. So maybe change happens one step after the other and you need to find other people of that sort who are at the threshold, you know, that, uh, but don't know how to step over and you can drag them over. That is needed. We need, it's like, you know, midwifing, midwifing the men into their feminine uh, possibilities. So they have a difficulty to do it, I think, at least. I mean, they do men's groups and everything, but wouldn't it be easier to learn directly at the source <laughs> from a feminine yeah. person? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You are right. You are right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel i mean as i said today i'm in a really comfortable place <laughs> thank you okay Dodgy. is it still english lesson at home homeschooling yeah it's beautiful <laughs> it's beautiful uh, yeah i cannot see it well but okay yeah 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 a lot of children at the fire Good. yes it's a typical kind of party we have in June in Brazil. Uh -huh. It's June party. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> so, sorry. I'm sorry for that. No, that's okay. That's okay. Um, that's what we women can do, you know, uh, sort of multitasking and, and uh, embrace uh, things and weave them somehow into the, the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and not get crazy. Yes, you are right. You are right. It's more than moody testing. I like the embracing yeah. because I cannot tell him, no, 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 no. I mean, yeah, and try to. But as I said, I think I'm a very, I am in a comfortable setup today because I'm able to work three days a week mm -hmm. and I can do my master's. Mm -hmm. So it's now really a perfect fit for this moment in my life. And I know this is leading to something that is still going to emerge and it's not there yet. The only thing I'm really observing is to keep my, my integrity that I'm not at work, that I'm not trying to fit on the system when the system um, elements are hurting my current beliefs mm -hmm. so that's what i'm not doing i keep myself with a lot of freedom for me, you know? mm -hmm. so you are doing this master uh, what is it exactly and what do you think it is serving you yeah it's really challenging it's in english of course it's not my native language to do a master's degree my my graduation is in law so i go to psychology now and in English, with the whole um, academic setup, which is highly demanding, so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> <But you laughs> when, <do> I, 
when I think it sometimes I'm like, how are you doing this? How come? But then one little step after the other, you know, then here I am finishing the second year. And this is a deep, deep dive in terms of consciousness from the traditional psychological approach together with this whole mystical um, and thousand years studies from Buddhism, Taoism, and this whole um, mystical background. So the idea is to mix them both, creating an understanding that expands but includes the scientific domain. So it's really, I need to refer everything I write with the whole scientific um, um, reference and always bringing together also the, the findings and learnings from traditional mystical experiences. So it, it's a blessing, I have to tell you. Yeah, so I'm here in a deep dive. I think you mentioned something on the integral theory. So I'm here with Ken Wilbur, which is a challenge in itself. <laughs> and Ken Wilbur, he was really coming from, from the transpersonal uh, school as well. So, yeah. So here I, I am. I muted myself because I have the swallows out here and they are making a lot of noise. I don't know if you hear it. No. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so there is something which is attracting you and, and pulling you into your future, no? When you are doing all that, despite of, you know, whatever you have to do at the moment and in these years. Exactly. It's a very nice question, Wes. It really helps me to unpack some of these things, the therapeutic conversation. <laughs> um, I didn't start this because, oh, I want to do this because then I want to do this. I knew it was a calling. It is a calling. And I know the answers will come. This is the feminine way. This is exactly the feminine way, you know? Well, the other one which I was brought up and I still use often is if you do this, then you can do this and then this and then this. This is the masculine way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really listening to my intuition. I'm deeply listening to my calling and I am just navigating with trust. That's good. Wonderful. Yeah, and yeah. that is almost 100% sure that you will arrive where you need to arrive, you know, that you, yeah. Because when you begin a thing, I'm, I don't know if you know, I'm now very much beginning to go into a, um, how can I say, the archetypes of the soul. Mm -hmm. This is a, a German woman who has, uh, is a medium. And she has channeled a lot of books. And this is so, so wonderful. That uh, helps a lot to understand how your soul is, has chosen in what conditions and in what ways it is on the, or she in this, no, I don't know. She, he is, whatever, uh, on this earth. And it, it's like a typology. It's a very large range of aspects which, they say they choose before the goal, the the uh, the energy, then mm -hmm. also the archetypical uh, angsts and the models and uh, several things. And then what I find so calming, they say when you have the only chance is that you do your development with your own consent or against your consent. You will always do a certain development in, you know, the mm -hmm. soul will make sure that what it needed to learn, it will learn. Also for the same task, you might need more than one life. So if this, this time you didn't make it or your soul in the body, mm -hmm. 
wasn't able to arrive at the at the goal, let's say, or at the task, it's more a task, uh, then generally in every level you you be about three or four uh, lives, but then maybe you need more. And <clears throat> what you are talking about, it reminds me so much on what I'm reading there and what I'm living now, as I'm getting more aware of that too, that when you consent with your whole heart to what your life brings to you, that means that's it, what your soul is wanting from you, you know? Perfect. Why it came on the, on the earth. And when you have, I don't, it's not fun, joy. If you have joy in what you are doing, then you can be sure that's the right thing for you to do. And, um, you know. Perfect. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree com completely. And it's so strong that all you need to do is surrender. All you need to do is embrace it fully and do not engage on your mind. And honestly, regarding this, my mind is sometimes, but it's really rare. It's like, with all this situation, how come you are here for hours and hours studying and reading? But that's when I'm tired or with pressure. It's one day out of three months, you know, that I ask what I'm doing here, you know, is with this whole Corona thing and you could be doing things for people outside, but it's a calling. I'm just, I'm just accepting fully and enjoying it exactly and that's, that means that you're on the right path and the result must not necessarily be the result which you think it's the right one but for the soul will be the right one you know yeah that's very nice that's one kind of, of meditation or visualization i could do asking my soul because I did already asking my child, which was great. And I asked my old lady, my old me, but I could talk to my soul. That would be nice. Yeah, very, very nice hint. Mm -hmm. no, that's, it's, it's beautiful. This, uh, there is only one book translated into English, which is The Archetypes of the Soul. But I'm reading now uh, several, you know, there are so families and they are supporting you without you even being aware as a normal person. And also the general, what, what human life means. I'm reading this just now. That's just wonderful, but it's only in German. Do you speak German by your... Yeah, you can auch auf Deutsch sprechen. Okay, so I will send you the 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 um, titles in 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 German, and you can uh, see if you if you like it. I'm. It's about half. Oh, I sent you also. I did an um, interview with a woman who did my matrix. She was channeling what my uh, um, characteristics, qualities are. You know. And mm -hmm. I had uh, some ideas before, but some ideas, uh, there's not ideas. This is something like you say, that's an intuition which a medium has and that comes through. And when she gave it to me, I was, oh, wow. And so I did three interviews with her and I will give you the, the URLs with that. So you have an idea without needing to read the books. If you are not attracted, then you are not attracted, you know, but mm -hmm. I'm completely in awe about that. I have done a lot of work, psychological work, also spiritual work, but this is also, it's a different level. That's wonderful. <laughs> anyway, Very I will nice. send it to you. Very nice. What is the name of the author? Varda Hasselmann. You find it also on YouTube. Varda con la V. Okay. And uh, her, her husband, um, Frank Schmolke. He is the one who is keeping the space when she is going into trance and asks the questions because she says when she is in trance, she cannot ask the questions. So that's another person uh, doing it. And they have done it for, I don't know, 20 years also in groups and uh, seems to be very valid. And you know, it is transpersonal and 
when you are very scientifically minded, you say, oh, that's all rubbish. And I was yeah. like that up to 20 years ago, more or less. But <laughs> also, ever more, I allow that there are things which we cannot see, which we cannot touch, and they exist anyway, even if we don't believe it, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad for you. It's the same thing with me. And I'm fascinated by and curious, you know, to learn more and connect with that wisdom. And I find it so interesting, as I mentioned to you when we were in the Gaia meeting, that one statement came from this scientific guy regarding systems, systems change. And then this indigenous person, he mentioned, you are the system. Remember we talked? Yeah. And then the wisdom, it comes from the cognitive mind. When we access the knowledge within, which is deeper than the words manifested. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad for us that we are open to allow this wisdom to come to us. And that it is not considered anymore something, you know, for which we need to go in psychiatry or something, but uh, that we can, we can explore these things, which probably 50, 60, 70 years ago was still considered like, you are crazy, you know? <laughs> so. I know. The spiritual emergency, I don't know if you know Graf, you know, the studies of Graf. Yeah. Yes, I mean, people, I mean, there was a very limited understanding of our soul, of all these responses. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we had, the Christian church had an understanding of the soul, but it quite, let's say, um, instrumentalized by human power uh, desires of the of the church itself you know yeah and so we we have a distorted image of soul i think generally so mm -hmm. it's nice that yeah. we can change or that. limited very limited yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 so wonderful can you still say something about uh, brazil and corona we hear Hor horrible things about your country that the uh, huge graveyards and thousand deaths a day and something like that do you hear that do you follow well, that honestly i am trying not mm. to watch so much of the news i'm doing my best to keep a certain distance yeah. Because it comes with an, a lot of fragmentation and polarization yeah. and bias. So two, three times a week, I just check a little bit. And I think what is spoken outside is worse than what is really happening. Mm-hmm. I think so, because for instance, we are not collapsing in terms of structure. It's mm -hmm. still all the news we, we see, we still have places for people. There were some focus specific places, I think in the North, in Amazonas, where it was more critical. I don't know how the situation is now, but as I said, Brazil is a continent. And then when we talk about Sao Paulo, we are still under control in terms of structure. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think what is really challenging negatively is the politics because they are really an obstacle to something which is already really terrible. They make it worse. Mm -hmm. The whole political games and power and lack of awareness i do myself to put myself in their their hearts because 
they are concerned about the economical aspect, saying if we don't take care, if we don't allow people to go back to work, they're not going to have money, and then we're going to face another big problem. Because our mind is trained and it's wired to understand the economical system is the basis for all the others. But this is something that it's, it's a convention. It's something human beings, we, we, we started believing that and then we have the whole economical system with this set of beliefs. So when I put myself in their shoes, they say, we have to go back to work, but then people are really fragile. They're really, you know, they can get sick and then we have a problem in terms of life and not an economical aspect, it's life itself. So on this um, arena, they fight in each one with a fixed mindset, you know? and with a huge uh, limitation and difficulty to cultivate a dialogue and create something. So the level of, of awareness of seeing the whole is very limited. Yeah, exactly. It's a little bit almost all over the world, isn't it? So people the, like, you know, the thousands of people who come to, came to Gaia and there are other other places where people go and connect with um, others who are on, at least mentally, first of all, on the forefront of thinking there can be something else and then they are willing to, to do something else, you know. That makes me hope that sooner or later that will come to the level of our leadership as you had the <laughs> example. It was not political leadership, but also political leadership sooner or later could arrive there, would hopefully. Yeah. They have created such a prison of interconnectedness in a, in a, in a horrible way, you know, of, of binding right. each other to, if you do this, then you do da, 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 And then, yeah. you know, that's really difficult. And many people have hoped now with Corona, this nod would have been cut, but it's not. It, they still try to maintain the same idea of economics and they don't even have an idea that economics could work differently. It yeah. just doesn't enter. No? And there are enough eco economists, I saw several uh, YouTube videos, who say there is another way. That's not necessarily the only way which we are, have embarked into. And when we put into the, the first axiom of economy is to make profit and ever more, that's where we go. You know? yeah. But you can exchange that. You, you don't need to, to have that. It, is, it was exactly. a choice of one influential economist in the, I think they decided in the 70s on that, or even 60s or 70s. I've forgotten the name of this economist who was before last century. But they embarked on this street and then, you know, that's what we got. And when we change one axiom, we know that from mathematics, the outcome yeah. is completely different, exactly. even with the same... <laughs> calculations with the same processes, it comes out something else. But people need to first understand that they can change this axiom or one axiom, important axiom, and then do it. And so far, I don't see on a large scale, even with normal people, I don't see the awareness that it could be different. So. Exactly. <laughs> So this is, this is the situation. This is what is happening in terms of structure and norms and systems. Yeah. yeah. They are always a little bit behind in uh, integral theory. You know, we are on the upper left uh, uh, working on our interiors. We have yeah. already gone somewhere. Upper right, the science has gone somewhere and has some ideas already, but until the structures follow it will take yes some time. <laughs> exactly yeah it's yeah i have the, the aqua framework here in my yeah. on my wall yeah <laughs> so hopefully we we find space to share these ideas and co-create 
new answers and yes. ask new questions. Yes. yes, exactly. And you know, and I see my task in this world now, in this period of my life, is to connect people, connect with people, and connect people of which I know, who I know, with which can um, combine each other's forces and so on. And that's also part of why I asked, I'm getting bored now. I begin to ask people like I asked you, <laughs> do you want to come and talk with me? Because we alone, we cannot do that. We need a sort of group or other individuals with whom we can um, exchange ideas. I have a, a weekly women's group in German where we talk about what is on our minds or on our hearts, you know, and then it's, you can call this chat, but it's not, not a normal chat. It's not a chat like, you know, oh, I did this and this one has done that to me. That's not this. It's just, I'm concerned about, and then we co-create, uh, everybody can say what they need to say in that moment, you know, without uttering opinions and I'm right, no? Yeah, but, you yeah. Know? yeah. And I enjoy doing these things, you know, like I enjoy to talk with you. <laughs> it was really nice. And I, I really like this, this calling you're, you're, you're following, which is creating and sustaining a network. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it requires energy too, and requires compassion and inclusion and really, really be open. So it's a really, really interesting place to be. Yeah, and I enjoy it a lot, you know. I was a, a, a classical singer before and teacher, and I don't really, it's, it's, it was another life, a previous yeah. life. <laughs> I know, we can have different lives. Yeah. I know what yeah. you Oh, I, I have to, to finish now because there is a, um, a pack coming can we connect another time or we can next week is going to be easier for me let me start just stop the recording and go out and get the pack.